Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at the phloem, phloem tissue, active loading, and then we'll finish with a summary. So the phloem is another type of substance that's found in plants, and it's slightly different to xylem. So plants have to be able to transport two main things throughout their general structure. They have to transport water up from their roots where it's absorbed, up to all of the different parts of the plant. But the sugars need to be transported up and down in both directions. This accounts for sugars and assimilates as well. So an assimilate is a word that you might have come across in different parts of biology. It's a general term that doesn't really refer to a specific molecule, but it just means any organic molecule that could be a carbohydrate or an amino acid or a hormone, and it's basically anything that's used by an organism. So it's actually quite a broad term that could cover anything from nucleic acids to proteins or anything that's used by a living thing. So the phloem transports these, whereas the xylem transports the water. So if we just consider the xylem first, the water is absorbed by the roots, travels up the plant and branches up to any leaf or part of the plant which requires water, and this travels up in the xylem. But the phloem transports the sugars and other assimilates that the plant makes to wherever they're needed. So remember it's the leaves that make sugar, in particular sucrose, from the sunlight and the reactants of photosynthesis. And this sugar needs to be transported up the plant and down to all of the cells of the plant because they all need sugars and assimilates to be able to function. So these are the different directions that things travel. Plants have two main transport systems as we just said, and they're grouped in specific places. So we're talking about the two transport systems which are the xylem and the phloem. The vessels that transport these two are grouped into tissues called vascular bundles. So if we were to take a cross section of any part of a plant, vascular bundles exist in the middle. So if we take the cross section of a leaf, we can see the leaf's thickness here, and it's this brown area which we call the vascular bundle. And it's named so because it is literally just a bundle of lots of different vessels grouped together, with some vessels carrying the water, which is the xylem, and some vessels carrying the sugar and assimilates, which will be the phloem. And here if we take a cross section of a stem, you can see the vascular bundles are sort of arranged in a concentric circle, and then through the root as well, they're arranged more centrally. So as we just said, the phloem is what transports the sugars that are made by the plant and the assimilates as well, so other things like hormones, proteins and circulating carbohydrates. So this is just another cross section of a stem, if you imagine cutting through the stem like this, and then zooming in here, we've got the different types of vascular bundle. So this whole region is the vascular bundle, and what you tend to see is that the inside vessels are the xylem, which is transporting the water and the mineral ions up from the roots to the top of the plant, and then the outer part of the bundle is the phloem, which is transporting the sugar and the assimilates. So the phloem vessels lie on the outside of the bundle, the xylem vessels lie on the inside, and they're always grouped in these vascular bundles. So the molecules that we've talked about, the sugars and the assimilates and all of the hormones, they are produced by the leaves during photosynthesis, but they're required by all different parts of the plant, because all living cells require such different organic products. And therefore this is why they travel up and downwards, whereas the water only goes up to where it's required. So now let's talk about the actual tissue that transports the phloem and what it's made of. We've got two main types of cell when we're talking about phloem tissue. The first type of cell is called a sieve tube element. So a sieve is any instrument that has lots of small holes or pores in it to allow a certain degree of molecules through it. So these cells are, are called sieve tube elements, and these are stacked end to end with the shorter ends facing each other, allowing a flow of sap. So we've got a diagram here which shows a bunch of different vessels. So we're looking at phloem tissue. The sieve tube elements are these ones here, and you can recognize them by the fact that they're stacked end to end, and at the end where they meet each other, we've got this sieve-like structure. So the tube itself is the sieve tube element, and the sieve tube element itself, being the whole tube, is a cell, so it is actually a type of cell. And then when the two ends of two different cells meet, this is called a sieve plate. And this sieve plate is where we get these holes which allow a certain size molecule to pass, and this is how the sap is going to transport itself through the tube across these sieve plates. The sieve tube elements, as we mentioned, are already a type of cell, but they're slightly different than most cells. They have very little cytoplasm and very few organelles, and they don't have a nucleus anymore. The reason for this is that it provides more space for the sap to flow, but they are still a living cell. So this is in contrast to xylem, which was a dead cell. In xylem what we had is the cells would pack end to end to create these tubes, but then they would end up losing all of their organelles and get surrounded by lignin, so they would be dead. However, in the case of phloem, 
the cells stack end-to-end -end again, remove some of their cytoplasm and their nucleus, but they're still living. So phloem is a tissue which is alive. So here you can see we've got a sieve tube element cell here. And in contrast with this normal cell, which is part of normal tissue, you can see there's a lot fewer organelles, so there's less mitochondria, less endoplasmic reticulum, and there's a nucleus in this cell, but there isn't one in this cell. So there's less cytoplasm and less organelles to maximize space for that sap to flow through the cell through those sieve tube plates. The other type of cell that we need to talk about in the phloem tissue is not the sieve tube element, but it's the companion cell. And these are the ones that regulate or control the transport of the sugar and assimilate in the sieve tube elements which lie next to them. So going back to this diagram, we've got here the sieve tube element, which is the one we've just talked about. But then next to it, we've got another sort of tube-like structure of cells, again stacked end to end. But these cells are known as the companion cells. And they're named so because they kind of accompany the sieve tube elements. They lie next to them and in between them, acting like a companion. And they help to control and regulate the flow of sap through these. So the flow of the sap or the sugar and assimilates is always through the sieve tube elements. They don't flow through the companion cells. The companion cells are more of a control center for the actual flowing tubes. The actual companion cells have a different makeup to those cells of the sieve tube elements. So they contain many mitochondria because the phloem actually, in order to flow, it requires active transport to move sap in a process called translocation. So translocation is describing the process or the transport of assimilates through a plant. So that's what we mean by translocation. So here we've got our sieve tube element again with its very low level of cytoplasm and no nucleus. But here we've got a companion cell which has the normal organelles but it also has many mitochondria because the movement of sap through these sieve tube elements is an active process and by active we mean that it uses ATP. So they have to have a lot of mitochondria. Here's an electron micrograph showing the structures that we've just been talking about. So we've got a cross section of the phloem tissue in the vascular bundle. So you need to be able to recognize the different features. So let's go through them here. So the larger vessels that you can see here, here and here, and it includes these as well. These are the sieve tube elements where the sap is actually flowing. What we then have are these small darker blobs that you can see in between these, and these ones are the companion cells. So that would be one of these, this one, that one, these ones, the darker, more denser looking patches. We also have these structures which look like sieves themselves, and these are actually where the micrograph has sliced through at a point where two sieve tube elements are meeting end to end, and there's a sieve plate present there. So these are the sieve plates. And then what you might also notice is that there's another type of tissue interspersed between all of this, and that's more of a supportive tissue, and that can be found in these more irregular shaped cells, and that's called parenchyma. So it's important that you can recognize these features and know what they do as well. You also need to know how biochemically the sugars and the assimilates transport themselves through the phloem. So we need to talk about this in three main steps. So the process of loading sucrose into the sieve tube elements is called active loading. So remember going back to the big picture, we've got our plant and we've got leaves that are carrying out photosynthesis. As they carry out photosynthesis, they increase the level of sucrose and other sugars that they're making and also other compounds too. But we'll use sucrose as the main example here. What happens is this sucrose needs to exit the leaves, get into the phloem transport system, and then be delivered to the right parts of the plant. So step one, what happens is we've got here a general layout of our phloem tissue. So let's just quickly label it again. So this is our sieve tube element. And then here we have our companion cells accompanying them as well. Where we're zooming in here is a section of the cell membrane of the companion cell. So we're zooming in on the cell membrane of the companion cell. And on the other side of this membrane, it's just general plant tissue. So it's just general surrounding leaf tissue. So we've got a cell membrane here. The companion cell's internal part is in here. And then this is just leaf tissue. So the first thing that happens is in the companion cells, we've got a concentration of hydrogen ions and certain proteins that exist in the cell membrane are actively transporting these hydrogen ions out into the leaf tissue. So because this is active transport, it's using ATP and converting it to ADP. So just go back to the bigger picture. This is sending hydrogen ions out of the companion cell into the tissue of the leaf. And the reason why it does this will become clear in a moment. The process of active transport always moves something where there is very few of it to an area where there is already quite a lot of it because it requires energy to do so. So the purpose of doing this is it creates a diffusion gradient of hydrogen to go backwards later on, back into the companion cell. This is what then happens in step two. 
The hydrogen ions that have been pumped out diffuse back into the companion cells, but they do this through a particular protein which also takes sugars with it. So there's a particular type of protein which is called a co-transporter because it's co-transporting two things. It's taking the hydrogen ions and it's sending them back through down their diffusion gradient, but it also takes sucrose with it as it does this. So this is the purpose of this protein. And the reason we call it a co-transporter is because it's transporting one thing that coincides with another. So this is how the sucrose is getting from the leaf tissue into the companion cell. So now the sucrose has entered the companion cell, now the next step for the sucrose is to get into the sieve tube element so it can flow in the sap. The hydrogen ions that go back through will just keep being pumped out as they were in step one. And then finally in step three, the high concentrations of the sugar in the companion cells, which are building up, cause the sucrose to diffuse naturally into the sieve tube elements and then they can join the flow of the sap. So remember we've got this buildup of sucrose in the companion cell from the leaf tissue and because there is less in the sieve tube elements as it's moving on very quickly, there's a buildup of sucrose here and so they diffuse down their gradient from an area of high concentration to an area of lower concentration. And then this being the sieve tube element, you've got the sucrose in here and any other assimilates that you found. Now it can go up or down through these sieve plates to wherever it needs to go. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, Join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.